The one of one ring has been found. Too bad the guy that found it has to go chuck it into a volcano. No. Hey internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Raffo. It's Lord of the Rings, the most well-known fantasy property since the Odyssey. As much fun as I had building my Sander deck, it's a completely different level when every single card, name, art, flavor, everything, is pulled right from the pages of one of your favorite fantasy worlds. This set is stunning and is a blast to play. They pull directly from the books, so there's just scads of legendary creatures, especially with all the different versions of the same character. It's so fun to be able to team up these iconic figures, Aragorn, Sam, Glorfindel, who still doesn't get the respect he deserves, Legolas and Gimli, Gandalf, there's four different Frodo's. Four. We're not going to go card by card here, but here's some of my flavor favorites. The nine different versions of Nazgul, which you can have all of in your deck. The Witch King of Angmar specifically is amazing. A 5-3 that can give itself indestructible, paired with Smite the Deathless, which deals three damage and doesn't care. So good. The focus on sagas is fantastic as well, and I am absolutely in love with there and back again. I was really happy to see Grand, and making it a creature as long as you have an army is great. This freaking Shelob is amazing, turning creatures into food tokens, specifically these food tokens. Then in Commander, you've got Field Tested Frying Pan, Call for Aid, Bilbo Reaching Eleventy One Life, and the reprints of Commander Sphere as the Palantir and Soul Ring, obviously, are perfection. The flavor of the ring tempting you is a little off to me. The the influence of the ring on Frodo is overwhelmingly negative, so having its effect be something that you actually want to trigger in gameplay is weird. Plus, everyone could have a ring bearer, so there isn't only one ring. And it got complicated fast. Still fun though. My first chance to play with these cards was actually at a draft night hosted by Dragonsteel at their new warehouse. Brandon's a cool boss. I know some folk who work there and was blessed with an invitation. Thanks, Steve! This was my first ever draft event, and it was incredible. If you've never done it before, to do a magic draft, you get around eight people together. This had five tables with eight people each, and everyone has three booster packs. You open one up, pick a card out of it, and pass it. Then pick a card out of what you just got handed, and keep going until there's no more. Then open the next pack, pick one, and pass the other way. Then the third, and pass around again again until all the cards are gone and you have a stack of selected cards. You then use those cards, about 42 total, to build a 40 card deck to play with, adding in basic lands as necessary, usually about 17. Typically you don't want to get locked into a color combination too quickly, and it's recommended by Brandon himself to not play more than two colors. I think he did. After looking around the incredibly decorated conference room, Hoyd Secret Museum putting in work, as well as displays of all of the merch to this point, which is why I saw what was in the cell box, I sit down and my first pack first pick is this. Glamdring the Faux Hammer. Colorless, so I didn't think I'd be beholden to a specific pair just yet. Second pick, Gandalf the Grey. I guess I'm going red-blue. <laughs> Perhaps I should have waited a bit longer to lock in, but it seemed a good idea at the time. Again, my first draft. I ended up building a very thematic Gandalf Spellslinger deck. Lots of instants and sorceries, and technically went undefeated. Out of the 10 rounds I played, I lost only twice, but the games were best two out of three, so I win! Not bad for a newbie. Then at about 10.30, we started at 4, Brandon says, Did I mention Brandon was there? Yeah, I hung out with Brandon. Who wants to play the power cube? Uh, me. This is Brandon's personally curated collection of cards, made up of the most powerful and expensive cards in Magic the Gathering history, of course with some different mechanics thrown in. There were about a dozen of us who stayed, and the process was the same, except instead of opening packs, you just divide everything into 15 card stacks and go from there. So not only are all the cards super powerful, but many of them have been made double-sided. Brandon has put two cards together in one sleeve, and you can cast either the front or or the back. Plus, if you draft certain cards, you get a full playset of them. Multiple copies can go in the deck you build, not just one. This made the drafting process overwhelming, to say the least. 
for multiple reasons. I was two seats down from Brandon, sitting next to a guy who, in his first pack, pulled the Black Lotus. Brandon leans over and says, that's a $50,000 bill you've got right there. <laughs> One of my first pulls was Time Walk, a $3,000 card, and Mock Sapphire, a $5,000 card. I ended up building a blue-white extra turns deck, had a couple of Teferi that could do the thing, and I totally would have won my first round if I had been keeping track of my card draw triggers. I did take like four turns in a row, which was fun, but I totally got annihilated my second round. We've deviated from Lord of the Rings. But this does raise a good question. Considering Brandon's relationship to Wizards of the Coast, his deep and abiding love of Magic the Gathering, and the officially unofficial Night Radiant card by Randy Vargas, when are we getting the Cosmere universes beyond? When's it happening, Wizards? There's audience for it. World's largest Kickstarter do anything for you? Let's make it happen. One last thing, uh, Support your local game stores, because buying cards from Amazon sucks. I pre-ordered the Lord of the Rings Commander decks and still haven't gotten my Mordor deck. You may spend a bit more money, but your LGS deserves it more than Jeff. Thanks for watching! Huge thank you to my patrons, Doug, Matt, Data Gremlin, and a special shout out to Steve for his generosity. I wear Argyle in your honor. Thank you also to the rest of my supporters. I couldn't do this without all of you. Next week, we'll be talking about the origins of the Cosmere, but this won't be the end of my delve into magic. I'm also a big Doctor Who fan, <laughs> so come October, you can expect some wibbly wobbliness on my channel. Till then, Read and find out. This is me and Brandon playing magic together. It was pretty cool.